Good evening, this is the Lion of Legend, and welcome to Gavril, a horror visual novel where we need to survive a home intruder. What is your name? Well, as per usual, you wake up to a loud crash downstairs. Sounds like something broke. If you could blame this on a pet or sibling, that would be great, and you could go right back to sleep. Unfortunately, you live entirely alone. You have no choice but to check it out. Perhaps this is when I start saving. I do actually go back to sleep. It's probably nothing. You close your eyes and doze off. You don't wake up again. Ending one. Instant death. Well, hot damn. That was quick. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go back in here. We'll go down. We will go downstairs. You climb out of bed with your phone and fetch the baseball bat out of your closet for good measure. You make your way downstairs, pretty confident in your ability to maneuver through the house in the dark. But the minute your foot touches the bottom of the stairs, you find it. Stuck in something. No matter how much you pull, something around your shoe only pulls back. You're scared to put your other foot down, and you're unable to walk any further to turn the living room lights on. Hmm. Suppose I'll save again. Let's, uh... Stay silent. If you don't move, nothing will happen, right? Nothing will notice you. At least, that's what you hoped. You don't move a muscle, but it feels like something else is. Whatever was under your shoe was creeping around and over it, and moving further up, slithering around your legs, torso, arms. You swear under your breath and accidentally drop your bat to flail your arms, trying to shake off whatever was on you. It only persists, however, spreading further until it covers every surface inch of your body. By the time your brain successfully registers you are in real danger, the unknown substance covers your mouth and drowns out your screams. Oddly enough, you don't feel any pain. You can't feel anything, Everything is numb. You eventually lose consciousness. Ending one. Instant death. <laughs> I see we're making great choices. Say something. Hey. Whoever's out there, get the hell out. Please? There is a moment of silence after you, kind of stupidly, called out to whoever or whatever could be in your house. The silence is broken by a chuckle heard not so far away from you, only confirming your worst fear. Hmm. Well, I suppose we can use our flashlight. You hold your phone in front of you and activate the flashlight, illuminating your surroundings. You weren't sure what you were expecting, but... How the hell do I say that? Al, Al, you? Al, you? Am I saying? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that is indeed a whole ass man in front of you. You notice whatever you were stepping on retreat and crawl away from you. You take the opportunity to swing the bat right for his head. The man collapses. He wakes back up in the dining room. <sighs> I'm alive. He seems pleasantly surprised. You weren't exactly looking to commit manslaughter, but if you swung any harder and at the right spot, you might have. Fortunately for him, you are more curious for answers than anything. He may just have to live with the concussion for a bit. You observe him silently as he takes his full time to fully wake up and process the predicament he's in. 
He struggles to move where he is, thanks to the zip ties around his wrists. You really want to talk to me? Are you lonely? What the hell are you talking about? No. You took the time to tie me up, didn't you? If I didn't, you would still be doing God knows what in my house. But I am still in your house. This guy sucks. Why haven't I called the cops yet? You fiddle with your phone on your lap, hoping the stranger doesn't notice. You're going to call the cops, aren't you? I'm surprised you hadn't already. You really are lonely. God, he just keeps on talking. You look down at your phone as you're so close to dialing 911. So close. But if you did, you wouldn't be able to find out what's wrong with this guy. Why he's in your house of all places. So, you put the phone down. Wise decision, my friend. Hmm. I guess I can't call you my friend yet if I don't know your name. If this stranger was going to entertain your questions, you figure the last thing you should do is make him upset. It's Lion. Well, Lion, I'm Gavril. I would love to shake your hand right now, but, well... I don't think I want to touch your hand after seeing all that nasty shit around you. Or from you. You shudder at the idea of that stuff being inside him. Oh, don't mind all that. It's hard to explain what it is, really. But you don't have to worry about it for as long as I am satisfied. Promise. Hmm. Are you satisfied right now? You have a feeling you know the answer to this already. It would be more satisfying if you untied me. This position is very uncomfortable. Just as you thought, what should you do? Wonder if calling the cops will just get another ending. Yeah, uh, let me just get some scissors in the other room. I'll be right back. Other room? Lion, there are already scissors in this room. I can see them right there. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> my character's dumb. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Let me get those then. Your heart is pounding. You did not think that through. Wait. Why are you so nervous? It's not like he can do anything tied up like that. You're perfectly safe, aren't you? You take a deep breath and get up, or try, anyway. Your feet can't move. Wait, hold on. You look under the table and at your feet, only to see that pitch black mass crawl towards you. It slides under your shoes and curls around them and then up your legs. You begin to kick at them in a panic and attempt to get up from your seat but you're stuck. What the hell, man? I'm trying to get the scissors. How are you doing that? Stop! I think you know what to do to make it stop. No, you can't let him scare you like this. You grab for your phone and immediately dial 911. You continue to kick at the mass in the process. Hello, police? Please help. There's an intruder in my house. You were so focused on the phone and on the black sludge making its way up your body, you don't even notice Gavril right next to you, snatching the phone out of your hand. He's out of his restraints. He hangs up the phone call and drops the phone onto the floor. How did you? You will find out soon. What? You look down at yourself, shocked to see the black mass has covered most of your body now having reached your torso and creeping towards your neck. You try to move, but to your shock, you have lost all feeling in your limbs. It was hard to tell where they began or ended while coated like this. Everything felt numb. You're paralyzed watching yourself, slowly consumed by the substance. What 
is happening to me. You're helping it grow, lion. I guess this is another way to satisfy me. Or rather, it. Every cryptic explanation out of Gavril makes you want to puke. You can't seem to feel your stomach anymore anyway. The mass reaches your face and continues to cover every surface inch of your head, muffling your pleas and obscuring your view of Gavril. The feeling is suffocating, and you figure with the last moments of consciousness that you are no longer yourself. Ending two, delayed fate. So, I think there are... How many endings? Six. So we're at two. All right. Maybe. Ah, so you are. Well, I'm here to keep you company. If you untie me, I'm sure I can reward your honesty. What kind of reward? There's only one way for you to find out. This guy sucks. Okay. Let's see. I don't have to worry about that because you're tied up, right? That is true. I guess I can still show you what it is, even in this uncomfortable position. Show you? You shake your head. No, no, that's not necessary. You don't have to show me that goopy stuff again. Just tell me about it. What is it? I already told you. I don't know how to describe it. Here, just watch closely. Let's watch. You look frantically around the room, unsure of what to immediately expect. And then you realize. You look under the table and at your feet, only to see that pitch black mass crawl towards you. It slides under your shoes and curls around them and then up your legs. You begin to kick at them in a panic and attempt to get up from your seat, but you're stuck. Stop! Get it away from me! How are you doing that? I think you... Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh. <laughs> I guess I died. <laughs> okay. Um... Hmm. So I'm hold on. I don't need to be shown anything. You'll be satisfied if I untie you, right? Fine, I'll just, I'll just do that. Oh, you're right. Yes, that would be perfect. This is for the best. You hope. You won't regret this. You hope even harder. You reluctantly get up to grab a pair of scissors and cut the zip tie around Gavril's wish wrists. Ugh. <laughs> he immediately stretches his arms above his head and takes off his hood to fully reveal his face. Ah, much better. Thank you, lion. If it's chat you want, it's a chat you'll get. Cool, okay. I mostly just need to know. Why did you break into my house? A friend led me here. We're both pretty hungry, so he might have smelled something good. I don't know where he's run off to now that I think about it. Wait, there's more of you? It's not comforting to know your house as a potential buffet. Oh, he and I are nothing alike. For one, he is a rat. A rat. You are friends with a rat. Wait, I remember you had a tail, just like a rat. What are you talking about? He takes a moment to process what you might mean. Oh, you mean my... That's not a tail. It's more like a third arm. Not that there is anything wrong with tails, or rats having tails. Um, we'll save here. Hmm. Hey, don't worry. It's a nice look on you. Oh, thank you. It does make stealing food easier. You don't have to steal anything. Look, I'll, I'll get you something to eat. Maybe save some for your friend, too, wherever he is. You are too kind, lion. 
Yeah, you really are. What should you get for him? Let's get him fruit. You head to the fridge to take out a bowl of fruit and set it on the table in front of Gavril. He holds the apple in his hand and... Whoa, what the fuck? His tongue lolls out to lather it in, the same black stuff that has been tormenting your curiosity all this time. It's such a gross sight, but you can't seem to look away. You watch the goo entirely coat the apple, and in a matter of seconds, it's gone. Gavril withdraws his tongue back into his mouth. Why didn't you eat it like a normal person? Apples are very hard to chew. It's easier this way. What about the banana? You want to watch me eat a banana? What? Uh, never mind. Anyway, you actually use the black slime to eat things. Gavril only grins back, answering your question. The only thing you can think about is how you were stepping on that stuff not too long ago. You could end up just like that apple. How does it work? Is it like... Acidic? Hmm, no. I don't think it melts things exactly, but it kind of works like that. It's so hard to explain. I am not a scientist. But, my cousin is practically one, so I'm sure he would know. He is very smart. I'm assuming your family doesn't know about all this yet. Family is a strong word. It isn't a strong word. That's literally what cousins are. Not in good standing with them, huh? I can see why. I don't think that's your business. Well, you did literally break into my house. You're a felon. Of course your family doesn't like you. You aren't making chatting very fun. This is what you wanted to do, yes? Look, I just don't see why I have to cater to you when you're the one trespassing on my property. Because you are afraid of me. Yes, I am scared to death that you can eat me with your goop thing. I don't think I can learn anything more about that from you. So, how about you leave, alright? Peacefully. We both have what we want. Now go. Hmm, that's fair. Pay Curand. I hope I said that right. He gets up from the table and slowly makes his way to the front door. You breathe a sigh of relief. The hell is over. For a moment anyway, before you black out from the swing of a baseball bat. You wake up to discover your wallet missing and your fridge ready to food. Ending four robbed. Okay, sorry, you're right. So, all that slimy stuff, do you control it or... Yes, it's been so useful to me, but it's hard to say if it is a tool or a friend sometimes. Pity that this guy has such a warped perception of friendship. For a moment, you entertain the idea to unironically be his friend, before you quickly snap yourself back to rationality. So, does it keep you company? Can you communicate with it? I'm not sure, honestly. It's not easy to tell if it can feel anything but hunger. Wait, what? Lion, I have to go soon. I have a lot of traveling left to do, but I don't mind that I made a pit stop here for cheese. Alright, I won't keep you any longer. Gavril gets up. It makes his way to the front door. You watch him with an uneasy expression, but you suppose he has no reason to stay and continue to intimidate you. La Ravadir, Lion. Maybe we will cross paths again in the future. I wouldn't count on it. You nervously wave goodbye and breathe a sigh of relief knowing the hell will be over soon. You're shocked you're even still alive. Best of all, you can finally go back to sleep. Ending five, spared. So we need, we got one, two, four, five. We need six, 
three. Where do we want to go? Let's give him cheese. You head to the fridge to take out a plate of cheese and set it on the table in front of Gavril. He immediately lunges for it to dig in. Oh, I love cheese. How did you know? Just a hunch. In an instant, the cheese is gone. He really was starving. Ah, I forgot to save some for my friend. It's okay. If I see him around, I'll give him some too. You're not sure if you really meant that. So, why are you breaking into homes for food? By the sounds of it, you might be the lonely one here. Considering who he's friends with. Ah... Uh, Maybe I am. As much as I love my rat friends, it does feel nicer to talk to an actual person that won't run away. Like you. I feel like I can really call you my friend now. Are you sure about that? We just met. And you broke into my house. Maybe it was fate that led me here to meet you. You even knew my favorite food. Hmm. This is really getting weird. You tied this man to a chair not too long ago, didn't you? Maybe. Huh. Maybe you're right. It has been kind of nice just chatting like this. Even with how scary this whole situation has been. We're both lonely, I guess. We don't have to be lonely anymore. And I could get to eat cheese every day. You're starting to wonder if this is about you or about the food. Are you saying you want to stay here? Gavril, I don't want a roommate. What about more than just roommates? As in, not roommates. You said you liked my tail, so I thought... What door am I opening right now? Okay, sure, I'll give you a chance. Just don't break into my house anymore, all right? Ah, I don't think I would be able to anyway. I have so much traveling to do, but long distance is fine with you, right? What the hell are you getting yourself into? Gavril takes a slip of paper and a pen out of his coat pocket to scribble something down. He slides the paper to you. Here's my number. You should call or text me to send pictures anytime you like. I am always available, I promise. You slowly nod your head, not quite processing how quickly this was happening. This man was as lonely as it gets. And considering his friendship values, you doubt his perception of romance is any better. Do you, uh, have any hobbies outside of larceny? Oh, I can play guitar. I wish I had brought it with me so I can play something for you right now. You can send recordings later. And I am quite good at playing games, such as Tag and Hide and Seek. Noted. I am so happy, Lion. I know I have to go soon, but... I am so glad to have met you. Even if it meant tying me to a chair. Gavril hops out of his seat and prances towards the door. Love was clearly in the air. So long, darling. Bonus ending love. But wait, there's more. Click the cheese to feed Gavril. Um... Well, here I am. Feeding, what the hell? The, the, and Sobolon? So that must be his friend. So here I am. Feeding yet another boyfriend that I have. From this, uh, venturing of horror visual novels. That always tends to turn into me having another boyfriend... Or another boy to add to the harem. Well. 
This is, um... <laughs> I don't know what to say. I've given him over 200 cheeses now. I think we can go find the other endings. Which, that means... I still have two more endings to go because this, this is a bonus ending? Probably. Has anything happened at 300 cheeses since I'm almost there? No, but I hope this guy is happy. And his friend. Um... Yeah. Let's... Main menu. Okay, you want me to save? Turn. Main menu. Alright, so now let's curve this guy. Ah, uh, you may be right. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just so happy right now. Well, isn't that nice? Still, a feeling nags at you that you are incredibly lucky to be in this position unharmed. Okay, so now we're going... Okay, so we gotta find... How do we go no way here? You're being irrational, Gavril. Ah, you may be right. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and untie him. And we're gonna say his coat looks really weird. Why does he need a third arm? Well, not his coat, but the, the black goop stuff. Makes it easier to steal food, no? Okay. Yeah, you are not taking anything from my fridge. Especially not after you broke that vase. You don't seem like someone who can pay that back. But... I haven't eaten all day. You said you'd keep me satisfied. And you promised you wouldn't be any trouble if I untied you, which I did. So stop complaining. You untie me and leave me hungry. Are you sure about that, lion? Huh? The more you think about it, you suppose the implications aren't exactly in your favor. Well, you're not a cannibal, right? No. I would not label myself as that. Fuck. He is one. Gavril seems to read your mind as he watches you slowly get out of your seat. Ending 3. Ravenous. Damn, you moved pretty quick. This is clearly not someone we should be uh, messing around with. So, let's see. Okay, I think I may have found something here. We are talking about his rat friend again. Can you blame me? I'm a hungry guy with no money. There are so many ways to get a free meal that isn't just stealing from someone's fridge. I prefer to do it the fun way. Well... Tonight wasn't fun for you, was it? Getting tied up and all. No, it was still fun. I got cheese after all. You've made me very happy, lion. Well, isn't that nice? Okay, I haven't found anything yet, never mind. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, um, actually, so I think I did find every ending. We got... Instant death, which is one. Delayed fate. Ravenous. Robbed. We got the good ending, farewell. And we got the love ending. So, that is six endings. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, but of course, if you all watch this video and tell me that I'm wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> that being said, this is an interesting character. We didn't learn that much about the goo, though, oddly enough. But, looking at the developer's page, it seems they are working on a part two, potentially coming this summer. So, perhaps we will find out more. Who knows, we'll just have to be on the lookout. Um, I did enjoy this visual novel, so I will be on the lookout myself. 
That being said, I'll be leaving a link to the game in the description as per usual, so you all can play the game and follow the dev yourselves. If you did like this video, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe, share the video, etc. And until next time, have a good night.